Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video because it is going to be my May makeup rehab update. Basically, I'm going to be recapping with you guys how much I spent in May, talking to you about my budget for my low buy, and then also chatting through any makeup products that I used up in the month of May. These actually are some of my favorite videos to film just because it really helps me, really helps to keep me in check about where I am with my spending when it comes to beauty, which has been an issue for me in the past. So if you guys are interested in hearing about what I spent in May and the makeup products that I used up in May, which spoiler alert, I used up so, so much makeup in May. I am so proud of myself. So if you're interested in that, then stay tuned. But first, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I hope you consider doing so before you go. I post videos every single Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And without further ado, let's get into my May update. All right, you guys. So I mentioned in my April update that I wasn't going to be purchasing anything right away during the Sephora VIB sale because I was going on vacation and I kind of wanted to like spoil my myself on vacation but then I ended up going in store as well as I think I made an online order I think I can't remember um right at the beginning of May because I was like oh it's gonna be hard to travel home with all those products if you guys are interested in seeing my Sephora VIB sale I will link that for you guys and I'm gonna do a separate hits and misses follow-up on that where I talk to you guys about if the products are working for me or not because there's so many products it would be really hard to get through I did talk about having so May is my birthday month or was my birthday month and I did get quite a few gift cards So I was gonna be a lot more reserved during this for a VIB sale But because I had so many gift cards, I did go a little bit buck wild um, and Out of my own pocket. I did still end up spending two hundred and eight dollars and eighty cents um my monthly budget for myself that I set was $125 at the beginning of the year, and I believe that adds up to $1,250 over the course of 12 months. And I know this might not sound like a low buy to some because it's still like a lot of people do like the reverse ruse, reverse rouge, and they try and spend under a thousand. This just really wasn't my goal for myself. And again, this is my low buy. Last year, I would find any excuse to purchase makeup, and I was spending way over $125 on makeup every month. I have a YouTube channel. I really enjoy playing with makeup, doing my makeup. So I didn't want to completely restrict myself. And I felt like at the beginning of the year, if this, if I still wasn't like learning a lesson from this, then I could maybe, maybe try and do a no buy. But being on this budget, if you will, has really helped me make smarter purchase decisions, which was the whole purpose of this low buy for me anyway. So I did go over budget this month. I did spend that 208.80 over the course of the Sephora VIB sale. Another thing that I will say is I'm only counting makeup that I used towards my goal of using the same amount or more makeup this year than I end up purchasing. I did include skincare skincare that I bought during the Sephora VIB sale, I counted towards money spent, but I'm not counting skincare that I use towards used products. I hope this is making sense. Um, I've been kind of up in the air on whether or not to include skincare towards my budget because I feel like this isn't a huge problem area for me, but I did pick up quite a few things during the Sephora VIB sale that weren't necessarily needs or replacement items for other skincare items. So I did decide to count them I hope that made sense. That was like off on a tangent. And then I did end up purchasing one more thing in the month of May, which was this Cover FX blush duo. I got mine in the shade Warm Honey. Um, and this was $38. I really, really wanted to get one. It wasn't available during the sale. And then I was purchasing stuff for my 5K giveaway. I purchased one of these to put in the giveaway and then I wanted to test it out for myself. So my grand total this month spent was $246.80, which is $121.80 over my budget. And then just to recap, the previous months, in January I spent $93, which was $32 under budget. In February I spent $43.20, which was $81.80 under my budget. In March, I went over budget again. I spent $2.21, which was $96 over my budget. In April I came in under. I spent $112.28, which was $12.72 under my budget. So overall my like limit thus far has been $625 and I've spent $716.28 which is $91.28 over my budget. I did decide to do like a rolling style like if I didn't spend any month 
if I didn't spend any money in the month of January, that would be $125 that I could tack on to another month. So I'm $91.28 over my budget. I'm hoping to have a good summer so I can kind of bank stuff up again for the fall VIB sale. I feel like after everything I picked up during this VIB sale, I'm like feeling good to go. The only thing I will say is I really, really, really want to buy the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette, I think it is, um, that comes out on the 3rd, which I think this video is going up after the 3rd. So I that might be a June purchase. But other than that, well, I also really am interested in the Huda Neon palettes because I love her Obsessions palettes. Those are my two temptations right now. But I'm hoping to not spend so much on makeup this summer. Now, let's talk about all of the makeup that I used up in the past month. Now, a ton of the items that I ended up using up are currently going in a plethora of different projects. So I'll leave a timestamp. I'm gonna talk about anything that's going in a project pan first, and I'll leave a timestamp on the screen for you guys if you don't wanna be spoiled by some of the items that I've used up from project pans. I have three updates this month for project pans. My roulette pan collab update will be coming to you the 15th, my graveyard project pan the 30th, and somewhere in between, I will update you guys on my 19 and 2019 project pan. And I'm feeling pretty good overall. So let's jump into all of the makeup that I used up. I did end up finishing up my Ofra Makeup Fixer Mist. I really, really, really do like this. I've decided this year that I'm really going to start trying to really curate my makeup collection, but I'm gonna hone in on some certain categories. And right now, the ones that feel easiest for me to kind of decide what my favorites are, are setting sprays foundations and primers more to come on my makeup inventory update which will also be coming very soon um but this is definitely one i'm going to end up repurchasing i just want to work my way through some other setting sprays before repurchasing this i think that, that this i think that this is a great setting spray and would highly recommend you also get so much product for 16 bucks so a really great value another setting spray i finished off i finished off this little mini tatcha luminous dewy skin mist I didn't think I was going to love this and I ended up falling in love which is such a shame because a full size of this is $48. Now this little mini guy is only $20 but I flew through this pretty dang quickly. This is something that I may consider purchasing a full size in during the VIB sale but then only use it for like special occasions if you will or not pull it out and use it every single day i would probably use my abh dewy set setting mist most days if i was looking for a dewy glow and then on special days i would use my luminous dewy skin mist so this is another one that i would repurchase i finished off three foundations this month i was so proud i've been working on some of these like almost all year so it, it was bound to happen um i finally finished off my dior forever foundation this has been my like ride or die foundation for such a long time but this is one that like i would only bust out on special occasions until i pulled it into my project pan then i would wear it more i brought this with me on vacation and i was just like oh my gosh i'm gonna be so so sad when i finish this because it's so beautiful now i just recently purchased the like luminous version during the sale but what i liked about this version was i felt like it was more of like a comfort matte sort of formula and sometimes i like to have not matte skin but like normal to like like a satin matte finish and i felt like i got that from this i think the dior forever skin matte version that's like repackaged i feel like it might be the same formula as this fingers crossed that it is because i really want it if it is this retailed for 52 dollars so super expensive Another favorite foundation of mine that I ended up finishing up, this was the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. This retails for $39. I will definitely be repurchasing this in the future. I love this foundation. Again, one of my favorites. This is definitely going to be one that makes it into my curated foundation collection and one that I always want to have on hand. And then the third foundation I ended up using up was the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. Now this retails for $11.99. This is obviously a drugstore foundation. I think this is my third bottle of this that I've gone through and I still have another one in my collection. I had a backup because I love this foundation so much. This is another one that will definitely end up in my curated foundation collection. Would definitely recommend, definitely repurchase. I believe that they've repackaged since CoverGirl has gone cruelty free, but definitely recommend this foundation to you guys next up i finally finished this primer 
I was waiting for this to be done. This is the Too Faced Hangover RX primer. Not a favorite of mine. This retails for $34. I got it during the um, Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale last year, and I just didn't love this. I have other primers in my collection that I prefer over this. In fact, I did a ranking my entire primer collection video in case you guys are interested in that. And right now, as far as primers are concerned, there's only really like three or four that I can think of that I would want in my curated primer collection. This is definitely not one of them. I could see why people would like this, but for me, it just wasn't nourishing enough. And then it also didn't make my makeup last any longer. And it also didn't give me like a luminosity. It just really was just kind of an extra, like not necessarily an extra step. I feel like it d does provide like obviously a base for your foundation, but it's just, not a primer that I would repurchase. Another product that took me absolutely forever to finish was this Benefit Hoola Quickie Contour Stick. This was going my 18 and 2018 project pan and there's like a little bit of product on the sides but obviously if you roll it all the way up there's nothing there and for like a contour stick like I feel like I can't really like I'm just this is I'm calling it good calling it done and we're good this was $28 and right now I've replaced this with the match stick by Fenty I think in the shade it's either am I think it's amber or almond I can't remember which also isn't my favorite I want to pick up the milk makeup baked bronzer I did use this kind of like as a bronzer slash contour the Fenty one is like strictly a contour shade so I would like to have another contour stick in my collection at some point I don't think I would repurchase this guy just because it wasn't anything special like I didn't get excited to use this, this was kind of I didn't get excited to use this this was kind of just like uh, oh like I want to use this product product up so I'm going to use it so for me personally, I wouldn't repurchase this. And then the last Project Pan item is this NYX HD Finishing Powder. I had the banana shade. And as you can see, it is completely gone. This was another one that was going in my 18 and 2018. And this just took me forever to finish. I purchased it and thought I liked it underneath my eyes to brighten up the eyes or the eye area. But I didn't end up loving it that way because I felt like it was a little too dry for me. So I had to find other ways to make this work. I used it to set my eyeshadow sometimes. Sometimes I would use it underneath the eyes if I wasn't gonna be wearing makeup for too, too long. Um, sometimes I would use it to like set my forehead. I would just get like, and also sometimes like I'll bring my foundation down my neck and I would use it to like set the foundation on my neck. So weird. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I did finally use this up and I'm really happy to have this one out of my collection. I could see why people would like this, but for me personally, it was just a little bit too dry for me. All right, you guys, on to the products that weren't in a project pan. So I have this little mini sample size primer. This is the VDL Lumi Layer Primer. Wasn't a fan of this. Didn't like the way that it felt on my skin. I felt like it almost like sat on top of the skin. It was thick. It gave like a little bit of a luminosity, but I just didn't love this. Now for this little sample, I did the math and this would retail for, and if you could purchase this at retail, it would cost you $5.06. I also finished off this little travel size of the Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. I'm working on another little guy like this. This is my favorite primer in case you were wondering. Um, and for this little guy, if this were, if you were to purchase this at retail, it would cost $5.60. Also, I am finished with the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. Definitely not a favorite of mine. I don't really even know, like, I don't know how to explain this one, but I just felt like it was messy um, and I just didn't enjoy it. I wouldn't purchase a full size in this, but this retails for $24, $24. So finished that up. Another mascara that I finished up was this little milk cushion mascara and I love this mascara. I say all the time on my channel that I would never purchase a like actually purchase a high-end mascara because I just would rather spend my money elsewhere but this is definitely one I would actually consider purchasing at full price. The little minis of these cost $12. And that is complete. And then the last item that I have that I finished up was this Kush lip balm. I recently posted a review of the Kush stash, which is where I got this. There is a little bit of balm in there that I could probably scrape out, but honestly, I'm calling this done. This retails for $16. 
I liked this. Uh, they do have some colored lip balms that I prefer over this. Neither of the color or just the original like this I feel like is going to do a great job of moisturizing your lips. If you don't have super dry lips, I feel like you could maintain and not get dry lips by using this. I really like the tinted ones just because I'm more of a balm person at work. It's not like I'm doing lip gloss or lipstick at work. So a tinted lip balm is perfect for me. I would definitely repurchase the tinted ones, but for the original, I probably would not. And I flew through this. This took me like a week or a week and a half to get through. I mean, I was reapplying it quite often at work, but I went through this really, really quick. So keep that in mind if you've been considering. I don't know if I said, but this retails for $16. So that brings my grand total of used products up in the month of May to $325.64. I'm so proud of myself for that. Uh, just to recap my previous months, in January I used up $75.80 worth of product. February was a rough month. I only used up $9.99 worth of product. In March I used up $83.85 worth of product. April 95 99 and then May 325 64 so this has definitely been my best month I don't know if I'll have a month as good as this I knew I was getting close to finishing up all those foundations which is like where the heart of that came in um, total I've used up $591.27 worth of product this year which is $125 and one penny less than I've spent so I still got a ways to go if I want to use up more makeup than I spent and I should probably reel it in on the spending a little bit if I want to achieve that goal but keep in mind I'm not counting any sort of skincare towards what I've used and I am or I did count some skincare towards what I purchased so after that I think that is all the information that I wanted to cover with you guys for this update for the May makeup rehab let me know in the comment box below if you guys are participating in a low buy you're doing a low buy you're doing a budget you're doing a no buy let me know and let me know how it's going I definitely feel like I finally like reached a point I did kind of black out during the Sephora VIB sale and I did go a little too hard um, but overall I do feel like I'm finally starting to make smarter and more thoughtful purchase decisions when it comes to makeup so i feel like this has been good for me um uh, other than that though you guys this is it for today's video i hope that you enjoyed and i will catch you in my next one bye